Hello friends, this is Pastor Henry. And I'm Pastor Brooke, and welcome to our first update regarding General Conference 2020. You know, th this is just our uh, little attempt to let the folks of Arab First UMC and just anyone who happens to stumble across this video uh, give a little bit of an update on what's going on at General Conference, as well as just some of what we see that makes us hopeful in the, the, the midst of, of this season. Um, there's been uh, a lot of things going Going on at General Conference has been a lot of worship. I tell you, I, go watch some of these worship services and and listen to some of these messages from the from, from the bishops. I, I have been I found them very moving. Yeah, so far. something I'm very excited to uh, name drop a little bit. One of my friends from a women's cohort group that I was a part of, Brittany Bethel. She's a part of the worship team. Oh, that's awesome! I turned on that's worship really one cool. morning and there she was singing in a microphone, and nice. that was so fun to see nice. her up there and I'm very encouraged. So yeah, worship's been great. Uh, that that that's awesome. So yeah, check check that out. Um, and there's been some some good business going on. We're not going to get into all of the the committee stuff uh, necessarily yet. We'll try to do a little bit more as we go along. But we just wanted to hit on uh, a couple of things. The first one was they have uh, uh, recommended the budget mm -hmm. for uh, the the new uh, year. And and you know, like a lot of us who have gone through this season um, uh, of COVID and disaffiliation and whatnot. Not the uh, Methodist Church denomination has not been immune to that United Methodist uh, Church. Uh, so they are setting the budget at three hundred and fifty three point one million, which is a lot of money, but it represents a forty two percent reduction on from, from what it was in twenty sixteen. Yeah, and this is a four year budget, correct? Mm -hmm. correct? Is that Okay, yeah. And so this also is some of the explanation for the um, r the um, rearranging of um, how many bishops each mm -hmm. conference gets um, and some other things as well. But that is sort of one of the larger items, right, is that is being affected by some budget numbers. Which, you know, again, this is something that a lot of us are facing. And what that mm -hmm. means is um, we're being forced to, and this is not necessarily a bad thing even though you hate to reduce budgets sure. we have to think of ministry differently in some cases we have to be a little more creative and we just can't be tied to the ways that we've always done things because the way we've always done things is not sustainable anymore yeah. trim the fat right yeah yeah absolutely so yeah that was the first major thing that we learned mm -hmm. um, at a general conference so far that's right and then the, the second a big thing was i gave this update to our um Administrative Council here at uh, a, a Rob First UMC, but I was talking, telling them them about a regionalization and regionalization passed. Yay! Isn't that encouraging? It is. It gives me hope. It does. So let me ask you this question <laughs> because some people are going to say, "What is regionalization?" So can you give them, in a nutshell, what that means? And y'all, th this is a, a good reminder for both us as United Methodists, but also just as Christians in general. Sometimes we talk about things that become, you know, Christianese, Methodese, um, and nobody else knows what we're talking about. Um, so <laughs> regionalization has become, um, and this is straight from uh, the United Methodist News uh, blurb about this, has become a United Methodist shorthand for a package of legislation that would restructure the denomination. Under the legislation, the U.S. and each central conference, church regions in Africa, Europe, and the Philippines would become regional conferences with the same authority to adapt the Book of Discipline, the denomination's policy book, for more missional effectiveness. Yeah. I.e., each region is able to adapt to their context. Yeah. It allows for more equity across the board. Yeah, because it, it's really kind of funny. Up until this point, central conferences have been able to do that. The church in Africa and in Europe and the Philippines were able to do that. But in the United States, because that was how they set it up back in the day, um, the United States, it took the general conference to make a change that would only primarily affect the United States. Yeah. Um, and, and so what this regionalization is, it's an effort to both be more equitable, but also, again, more contextual. You know, sure. What makes sense for us in the United States that doesn't make sense in Africa or what makes sense for the Philippines just might not make sense here. Yeah. 
Thanks for explaining that because it can be sort of a daunting or overwhelming thing to wrap your head around, um, but it's really not that hard. Mm -mm. Essentially, we are saying that, um, and it says 586 delegates to 164. That's the vote. So this this required, instead of just a simple majority, required a two-thirds vote, um, which, Mm -hmm. you know, would be 66%. Uh, This got 78 Percent, so it it, it passed uh, pr- pretty well. Yeah. Um, and what that means is it's passed general conference. Then this will go to the individual annual conferences. Um, you know, there could be some that get this on the docket for this year. What I'm gonna guess is most likely this will come up at like next year's yeah. annual conference. I, I could be wrong, but I say it's gonna take. It's probably gonna take a little bit. Um, some might even have a special called. Um, But I would say probably next year's annual conference, you'll see us voting on something like this. Great. And when we vote on this at annual conference, it also will require a two-thirds vote to pass Mm -hmm. as well. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So those are the two kind of major things Mm -hmm. that have happened during general conference. There's some smaller things that we can report back on um, later that have happened. Um, But those are the two big things that we're talking about right now. Yeah, it is. And and what I've what I've seen a, a lot of from folks who are there um, is there's a lot of hope coming out, especially with mm-hmm. the, the regionalization. Um, you know, y'all, this just kind of makes sense. You know, here at, at ARAB First, we're not even the same kind of church that Huntsville First Methodist mm-hmm. is or Gadsden uh, First is or, or you know, that you could go from church to church, much less, you know, First, a first church here in Alabama versus a first church in Colorado versus a first church in Ohio. Yeah. We all have different contexts, and we all adapt at the local church level to um, meet the needs of the people mm-hmm. around us. And th- yeah. this is kind of making it a little more formalized at the denominational level, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, me too. And I think it, allow again, allows for more equity across the board to do things that make sense for um, your area geographically, culturally. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm hopeful that this um, piece of legislation is something that will bring us um, to a more equitable table. Mm-hmm. So more equitable and maybe even dare I say a more mobile table. Sure. Um, you know, one of those folding ones that are, are are light made out of plastic, not the big wooden ones right. with those metal things that would always dig into your hands when you try to <laughs> those were the worst tables, y'all. Everyone grew up with those tables. These but. tables have handles, right? Yes. So that oh, we can yeah, just absolutely. easily care. so so much better. Y'all. This has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> uh, forgive us. Um I think that's our update yeah. for this time, y'all. Thanks for checking in, um, and we'll see you again soon with another update. Thanks. Bye.